Trans fats and too many calories may not be the only reason for America's obesity problem. Stephen Perrine, author of The New American Diet, is here to explain why some chemicals we encounter every day are now being called obesogens. Obesogens? Did I get that right? Obesogens. All right. I'd nev I've never heard that term before. Well, it's a term that was only really coined by researchers in 2009. Right. But even the American Medical Association has now come out and said obesogens probably play a major role in the American obesity crisis. So we're not just talking about overeating and kind of the things that we normally uh, associate with it, obesity. It's not just calories in and calories out. There's another factor. Okay. And these are uh, chemicals that get into our foods and beverages mm -hmm. that mess with our hormonal systems okay. and cause us to gain unnatural amounts of weight. Right. Uh, is this based like a, like on diet soda, the reaction, you drink a diet soda and sometimes your body thinks it really isn't, uh, whatever you, it's drinking isn't the same, it's almost just like having the sugar in it? Well, interestingly, there are, some, there are some studies that now show that diet soda can actually lower your metabolism. And that's one of the things that obesogens do. They, uh, they mimic estrogen, uh -huh. so they lower our testosterone levels, they lower our ability to burn fat, and they cause the fat cells that we have to be more effective at holding on to fat and gaining weight. One of the things we need to worry about is pesticides. Right. You know, the average American is exposed to between 10 and 13 pesticides every day. 90% of them have been linked to obesity. I'm sorry. All right, what about meats? <laughs> okay, this is the bad news. This is the scary news. The average cow yeah. is injected with six different hormones designed mm -hmm. to cause artificial weight gain. Sure, sure. So when you eat, uh, when you eat that beef, right, you're eating you're those eating hormones. Those hormones. Yeah. Um, Looking for hormone-free, mm -hmm. grass-fed beef is a way to avoid those hormones. In fact, you can eat uh, seven grass-fed steaks, still not get as much fat as you get in one conventionally raised steak. Wow. Oh, I'm guessing you're not going to like this one. You know, you use hair conditioner. How about bread conditioner? That's right, sandwich chain Subway coming under fire after admitting it uses a chemical that is used in yoga mats in its bread. I would repeat it, but I don't have time. But one organization says ADA, which is that chemical, may be in a lot more of your food than first thought. The nonprofit Environmental Working Group is releasing a list of 500 foods on the grocery shelves that may contain a foaming agent. Yuck! Joining us now to talk about the health risk, because it's not just as tasteful, it's dangerous. Dr. David Samadhi, Chairman of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital, Fox News Medical, A-team member and not an ADA proponent. This is disgusting. You just told me during the break that it's not only in bread it's, and yoga mats, it's in flip-flops. That's right. It's the actually, shoes. It's unbelievable. And the fact that this is in our bread, you know, what are you going to say? So it actually entered our food system in 1962. FDA approved this, was supposed to be 45 par per million, and over the years people kind of forgot about this, and now it's everywhere. Burger King, Dunkin', uh, Dunkin Donuts, McDonald's, Starbucks, you name it, it's out there, and people are really concerned about this. Now, what does it do for bread? Why do they need to put it in? What it does, it actually gives the foam, it gives it rubbery, it makes it stronger, it's easier to preserve it, and it can last longer. Okay. So I think a lot of these companies, unfortunately, are being selfish, as you mentioned it. They're doing this for their own purpose, for the business aspect, but these chemicals are getting in our body, and I don't know how it, this is going to go, but two weeks ago I said our food chain system, unfortunately, is contaminated. So listen, let's talk about this chemical. What exactly is it, and how does it affect our body? Well, this chemical is called azodicarbonamide, and you'll find it in a lot of breads in the U.S., uh, in Canada, but not the rest of the world. Actually, the rest of the world either bans it or will put you in prison or fine you half a million dollars for using it. That's because there's an, uh, the chemical, when heated, it actually degrades down into a compound that is carcinogenic. And the World Health Organization has deemed it an asthmatic trigger. It causes lung issues in workers who handle it, uh, skin irritation, eye irritation. So this is a very dangerous chemical. While the Food and Drug Administration has approved of ADA's use, the World Health Organization has criticized the chemical for causing asthma, respiratory, and skin conditions. It's interesting. You and I were talking about the FDA says it's okay to use it in food in this country, but other countries have a different view. It can't be used in Australia or the European Union. Same goes for a lot of other chemicals. Because lab mice who got ADA got cancer. And that's a big deal. And that's part of the reason why 
World Health Organization is being careful. They don't commit, but they say they're raising the, the awareness and they're very concerned about this. I would say all of this stuff has to be out of our food. It's not allowed in the European Union. It's not allowed in, in Australia, but we see them in this country about and we, this. And God knows what other chemicals besides this ADA we're going to have in our food. excited that we have a group of fine young women in the chemical industry. I was a pioneer in the chemical industry, starting out as a specialty chemical distributor, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk to you today about different career choices in the chemical field, starting with the chemical distributor, the sales and marketing arm that introduces the chemicals that go to the chemical manufacturers. Then you go to Kraft Foods, who takes those flavors and puts them in their end then products. Then you go to Kraft Foods, who takes those flavors and puts them in their end products. Then you go to Kraft Foods, who takes those flavors and puts them in their end then products. Then you go to Kraft Foods, who takes those flavors and puts them in their end products. Oh yeah, a lot of things to pick out there at the grocery store. Well, listen to this. Some ingredients in foods we love are banned in other countries because they are dangerous. So what do we need to look out for? Let's ask the authors of Rich Food, Poor Food, Dr. Jason Carlton, and certified nutritionist, and his wife, Mira Carlton. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. morning. This is quite an eye-opener. Let's start with counterfeit colors. Okay, well you can tell counterfeit colors right away because they're usually bright like that. There's five different ones that are illegal in other countries. Okay. They're red 40, blue 1, blue 2, yellow 5, and yellow 6. And they're known to be carcinogenic and also to make human gene DNA uh, mutate. With artificial food dye, which is in practically everything we eat, from soft drinks to mac and cheese. But artificial dyes are derived from chemicals, and these chemicals are derived from petroleum. You know, that highly toxic black sludge that makes the world go round. Taking that into consideration, it should come as no surprise that artificial food dyes have been linked to nerve cell damage and brain cancer, which is why you won't find them at grocery stores in Norway, Finland, France, or the UK. Unlike the US, those countries are willing to trade in that delicious yellow dye number five for the overall well-being of their, their people. I told you that most food colors, most food dyes, they're made out of petroleum. Petrochemicals, coal tar, these things are not good for us. And I'm actually just going to throw it out there right now. How the FDA allows these in so many of our foods? I have no idea crazy. why. Yeah. Do you think this is really red? No. But Travis, it's just food dye. It's just food coloring. It's just ADHD. Exactly. It's just cancer. Exactly. Artificial food dye, which we consume in cereals, sports drinks, and your kids' favorite mac and cheese. It's banned in the UK and other countries. For example, yellow number five or red dye number 40, there are more concerns with, especially linked to either behavior problems in children or the possibility of increasing the risk of being a carcinogen. So that's why we don't want them, and especially they're all over in kids' products and anything that's How can really you tell? Bright. <laughs> well, if it's not a natural color like that, then it's probably got it. And turn it over. Read the All ingredients right. list. Sure. Let's now talk about the chips. They've Lester. got a Lester in them. Yes. So it <laughs> took a quarter of a century and a half a billion dollars to create this frankenfat. But it didn't take very long for Canada and the UK to ban it completely. What it does, it Why? drastically depletes the body's ability to absorb fat-soluble vitamins, uh -huh. which we need for good health. So, and it also causes stomach upset. So even though this is a fake fat, if you eat too many of them, you're going to get some embarrassing bathroom fright because that fat goes <laughs> right through you. No, I, I've, I've noticed that. Yeah. Uh, stories I've read. Uh, Alestra, which is commonly found in fat-free potato chips and french fries. Although it's designed to lower calorie counts, it's also been linked to anal leakage and vitamin depletion. Alestra is currently banned in the UK and Canada. Next up, brominated vegetable oil. It's found in sports drinks and lemon lime sodas because it makes food dyes stick to liquid. Unfortunately, it's also used as a fire retardant. Not really something you want to be consuming. And with something so toxic, it's unsurprisingly been linked to organ failure, birth defects, and schizophrenia. This chemical retardant is now banned in over 100 countries, but not here 
in the U.S. of A. Uh, now, this right here, when I see this, I naturally think of brominated vegetable oil. Yeah. That, there you go. Of course, it's, it's apparent, isn't it? Yes, it's BVO, or brominated vegetable oil. And it causes a brominated thyroid, which does horrible things anywhere from... What does brominated mean? Brominated, it's, it's actually what it's made out of, okay. bromine. Okay. And it causes the thyroid to not be able to absorb iodine. And when that happens, it leads all the way up to things like thyroid cancer. Oh, so we don't want to have any of that. And um, it's been banned in over 100 other countries. The U.S. actually said that it's safe on an interim basis. Basis, which has lasted 42 years. Uh, that's some interim. So, <laughs> yeah. long Sports interim. drinks and citrus flavored sodas also contain an ingredient called brominated vegetable oil. BVO was patented as a flame retardant. Yeah. Long Let, let's continue with the bromate. This is potassium bromate. Potassium bromate, exactly what your grandmother would have used to cook bread, right? No. Manufacturers put it in to strengthen the dough, and which drives costs down. But the problem is that it causes kidney and nervous system disorders, stomach problems, and is considered to be a carcinogen. Now, the FDA urges manufacturers to leave it out, but a lot of them aren't sure. doing it, so check the labels. Finally, let's talk about this bread, and this has something that you've got to pronounce. <laughs> okay. Azodicarbonamide rolls Thank you. out the tongue beautifully. This is actually the same ingredient that you're going to find in your sneaker soles. And it's As in bread? Exactly. See, it's nice and squishy. And the whole thing is if you wouldn't eat your sneaker sole, I would highly recommend checking the label to make sure you don't have azodicarbonamide in it. If these things are, are banned in other countries, why aren't they banned here? Well, we, our food manufacturers just aren't pressured to take them out. But consumers can leave these foods on the shelf and it will send a clear message to the store and the manufacturers of what they really want to buy. I then comes azodicarbonamide. It's a common ingredient in breads, frozen dinners, and box pasta. Basically, it's bleach used to turn baked goods white. However, it's also used to bleach things like yoga mats. <laughs> Look, if you can hardly pronounce the name of something, it's probably not something you want to be eating. So maybe we should take a cue from Australia, the UK, and most of Europe and ban it too. This stuff called azocarbon, uh, you know, it's this stuff here, the name's on the screen, is banned across the globe. If you get caught using it in Singapore, you get fined and put in jail. Yes, this is a very hazardous substance that is linked to lung issues and workers who are exposed to it. If it isn't even safe to be around and breathe in, how could it be deemed safe to eat? Well, the U.S. is one of the only countries in the world that still allows this ingredient to be used here in the United States. In the U.S., big food companies use this as a flour bleaching agent. In other countries, they wait a week to turn their flour white. Not only is as a, it's on the screen, and Subway's nine grain bread, but you'll find it in the food at McDonald's, Wendy's, and even Starbucks croissants. And finally, there's just straight up arsenic. Yes, poison. Unfortunately, it's included in chicken feed, which ends up in your chicken dinner. And I'm not quite sure why it's being used because we all know that arsenic is toxic and deadly if you ingest enough of it. That's why the EU has banned the use of it in poultry altogether. Thoroughly disgusted yet? I know I am. The latest figures have our world population at 7 billion. We are feeding more people than ever before. Have you ever thought about the impact of meeting that demand? The modern industrialization of food production has introduced toxins like pesticides and herbicides into our air, water and food supply. And overfarming has depleted our soil of vital nutrients. Think about it this way. We would have to eat eight of these pesticide-treated oranges to get the same potency that our grandparents did from just one. The reality is that our food today doesn't have the nutrients it once had. Our ecosystem is in bad state and environmental pollution has contaminated our air, water and food supply and overfarming has robbed the topsoil of life-giving microorganisms and bacteria that convert an inorganic rock mineral into an organic form for it to be absorbed and uptaken by the plant. Essentially, our food is nutritionally bankrupt. On top of decreased nutrition, research from California shows that from 1941 to 1995, pesticide use in farming increased by 51 million pounds. That is millions of pounds of toxins that we're introducing into our bodies simply through the food we eat. Another reality of our modern industrialized world is the increased consumption of fast food and processed food. It's just too easy with our busy lifestyles to reach for empty nutrition and research backs it up. We are consuming up to 600 more calories a day than we were 25 years ago, but they're not the good calories. Our bodies are taking in excessive amounts of sugar, sodium, saturated and trans fats and less and less good nutrition from fruits and vegetables.